Hello and welcome to Xena Warrior Podcast Minisodes. My name is Vera and I'm joined as always by my two verbose co-hosts, Katie. <laughs> Hello. And Livy. Is that a promise? Uh, it's a fact. <laughs> it's <laughs> or so are we uh, ladies of few words? I think we've been that known one. to talk. No, yeah, yeah we talk a, a lot. lot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, our uh, time stamps on these podcasts are not short. Yeah, today we have a very exciting episode for you guys. It's actually a culmination of several patrons' worth of minisodes. It is about fanfiction. Specifically xenofanfiction. Oh, that's true. <laughs> but we, you know, you know just fa- fanfiction for us. We're and talking what about all fanfiction. Ever. Throughout time. Yeah. <laughs> that, I think we Buckle get up. verbose on that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so Liv, why don't you read us, uh, some of these prompts? Yes. Okay, hang on, my computer just went to sleep. Oh, <laughs> it does this. Mm. Oh, I usually read fanfiction before I go to sleep. Maybe your computer was reading. <laughs> it's <laughs> own fanfiction. My computer has read a lot of fanfiction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, we have four questions all related to fanfic. So we're going to try to like, this is like the umbrella under which all of your questions live. We will try to cover all of them. They're all different, which Mm -hmm. I think is impressive. So first we have from Robin, a deeper dive into the world of Xena fanfic. I like this one because it's implying that our first dive (laughs) wasn't deep enough. When did we? I think we we discussed... I think it, you know, we kind of tackled each, like, genre of Xena fanfic as it came up. So we talked about Ubers for Xena Scrolls. We Mm -hmm. talked about, like, uh, Conqueror fic for Armageddon Now. Here and there Mm -hmm. it has cropped up. Yes. Yeah, because, like, when I was, like... A certain we had talked about it, and I went through our oh. archive being like, I'm going to listen to that one. The and I just couldn't episode, find we... Yeah, I couldn't find I was like, I swear we did one. No. It's like, no. Nope. No, we haven't. That's why so many people want this. Yeah. It's yeah. Very yes. we've, yeah. We've alluded to it. We've kind of like wetted people's whistles. Mm. What is that video? Mm. It's wetted weird. Whistle. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something <laughs> yes, in a fanfic. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our second fanfic question is from Shelby. How fanfic changed how the show was perceived and how it affected the way the cast and crew viewed and interacted with the fans. Mm. Mm -hmm. Tricky. We will get to that, Shelby. These are good. Okay. Third question from Way of Friendship. The fanfic works of Vivian Darkbloom, or Mm. more generally, the phenomenon of the novel-length Xena fanfiction on the history of fandom. Okay. Wow. They they get long. They are indeed. <laughs> They're long. like Game of Thrones. I mean, I mean, we can talk about how how that came to be. Like yeah. from my own like stint in in fan fiction, yeah. I know I know how that happens. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, and then finally, our fourth question from Ellie: What are your thoughts on the disparity between fem slash and other kinds of fanfic? On a recent step of fansplaining, a podcast you can listen to that isn't ours, uh, <laughs> they talked about reader resistance to Femslash that features messy women and mm. or aggression between the pairing, except they noted in Xena Gabrielle fandom, so, so Xena Gabs is the exception to that rule. Hmm. Any theories on what makes Xena Gabs immune to this if you agree that this is an issue? Okay. Intriguing. Okay. Oh. There's a lot to talk about. Oh, we'll be here all day. Oh, boy. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Let's get verbose, guys. (laughs) Yeah. So, fan fiction. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. When you just say fan fiction, I'm scared. (laughs) It's a big big topic, but I think we have uh, some nice questions to break it down for us. Should we talk about like us and fan fiction? I think that's a good place to start. Let's talk about us and fan fiction. Let's do it. Yeah, we have all written some. I think we all have various degrees. Like, Embarrassed by mine. It's okay. You don't have to. Do- <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't have to link people you if you don't want to. to. Um, and uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, I think we all interact with it kind of differently, and we all like different things about it. And I think that mm-hmm. will come up when we talk about like uh, the different 
genres of xenofic and and how fanfic writers like relate to the show and and to xeno writing fic so yeah who wants to start do you want to start since you brought it up Oh, or, or should we end on you? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I've always so like I think I want to say like off the top like one one thing about like me in fandom is that like I I've only written a few fix like I haven't there's so many people who are They're like good. so prolific and I think for a, a lot of people and I think maybe. I don't know. I have no data to back this up, but I think a majority of people in online fandom uh, kind of experience fandom with fanfic being one of the, like, number one Mm -hmm. things that Mm -hmm. kind of take up, like, what you do Mm -hmm. (laughs) when you participate in in, in fandom. Um, We've talked about fan vidding before, and I think me and Veer specifically kind of uh, are more, like, fan vidders. I make a lot of vids and fan mixes, and, like, fic I don't read as much. Um, I think... When I'm, like, really, really super obsessed with something, I will start diving in uh, to the fic universe. Um, Sometimes you're fortunate, and it's something like Xena, where it's like, (laughs) oh, my God. There's, like, I find Xena actually overwhelming. I don't even know where to start sometimes, especially when you just first get in. You're like, what to do, what to do? Um, And then sometimes you have, like, teeny tiny little fandom, and you go through the 15 fix on AO3, (laughs) and then you're done. So so that's, like, me. That was, like, me and Deadwood with, like... (laughs) And I bet they were (laughs) all great. They were pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Um, And so, like, yeah, there's no... You don't have to, like, wade through (laughs) stuff with, like, a small fic. Um, And then I think I've been very vocal on this podcast about, like, tropes and things that I like so like I'll usually be very attracted to like a hurt comfort fic or this or that <laughs> and like I think it's like it's interesting to look at what like OTPs and like what fandoms you do actually read fic for like so for me um it has to it's, I think it's usually something where like the source doesn't have like all the stuff that you want from the source yeah. mm-hmm. so I will be very honest, Xena listeners. <laughs> the show itself for me is very fulfilling. So I don't I did not seek out a lot of Xena fic. Um so like the fic that I've read has kind of mostly been for research for the podcast. Um and then like leading up to doing this one. So like I have read fic like throughout the last, you know, four or five years of watching Xena. But I think that, like, the show itself being one giant fanfic that we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about, it was, like, kind of like, I'm like, all right, it hits all the buttons. You get all that, that sweet it's, like, hurt mostly, comfort. Yeah, so unless, you know, <laughs> kids cover your ears. I hope my parents aren't listening. Um, unless you were reading, like, an NC-17 fic or something, that's, like, not in the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe you want that sometimes. Um, but, like, right now I'm, like, really into, I'm doing a lot of, like, Star Trek, as we've kind of mentioned, and, like, yeah. first ships on there that it's kind of like you're watching the older shows and then it's not really a lot of stuff. So, like, you get that. That's when I'm kind of more into fic when you just mm-hmm. want like more or something that's like not so much there which I think is a lot of what fanfic is <laughs> I think I've touched upon what people are doing yeah. with fanfic <laughs> um so they're also doing many other things oh yes to- like totally so that's like that's like kind of me okay. um I I'm it's not my number one thing in fandom and like I need very specific things uh to want to read it and then I have to be like really 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 obsessed with the thing to then kind of go looking for stuff yeah uh i'll go next because we should definitely end on 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 Liv, who is our fanficker of the bunch um but for me uh and i mean i'm already like apologizing but i'm like the worst about fanfic i think well beer doesn't read <laughs> well that's, that's you, <laughs> just like just Zena. like Zena, i don't know how guys um <laughs> Uh, There's a reason you love that joke. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> um, I distinctly remember uh, being, I think, senior year of college, sitting across from Katie in our uh, apartment, and you you said like something about fanfic, and I was like, "What is fanfic?" And you were oh. like, "What the fuck?" Blink, <laughs> blink, blink, blink. Because wow. I was whatever that the old those days. Sweet baby yeah. angel. And I was just like, I didn't understand what fanfic was. You were talking specifically regarding. It was um, Firefly. No, well, oh. I don't think it was Firefly. <laughs> you were talking. Um, 
I think about like Buffy fanfic oh, at okay. the time. All and right. I was like, why would you want anything mm. other than the greatness that you have on screen? And, <laughs> you know, specifically, like for me, like I had shipped uh, Buffy and Spike and uh, I got it on screen. I and I was Sometimes. like, this was so amazing. And so therefore, like, I guess I, I just didn't like every possible crazy dramatic thing that you could think of like happen on that show. Um, and then, you know, like similar other shows like Farscape that we were like really into at that point. Uh, just really these crazy dramatic shows were giving me the things that I wanted. And plus we were like in school for like stories, at, you know, like film school. So like mm-hmm. I was like, okay, a script. That's like your fic. You, you write it. <laughs> and then they put it as an episode. It basically is. And so therefore, yeah. like I was like, I don't understand why you would write something else because like everything that's on screen, that's like the, that's, Canon. that's what you worship. Oh, that's Canon. what you worship. And so, like, I don't get it. So it took me a really long time to kind of, like, even switch that off in my brain. Mm. Um, I I went into, like, a little sort of memory spiral by visiting my live journal. and seeing forever. Seeing the things that I had, like, uh, put in my memories of, like, the fake. It was very well organized by fandom, I have to say. I mean, I clearly read some. It's it, But it's just I, it's hard for me to, like, seek it out. And the things I do seek out it, are the things that are, like, not there. And, like, there's a reason why the number one thing that was for me as far as <laughs> fake bookmarked was Doctor Who because like you want grown up shit on a television show for children ah, yes. and so therefore yes. it was like all, like I got now it then understand. I think I honestly feel like I got it then so uh, as far as like the the Xena stuff yeah like uh, I mean I remember like back when we started there were a lot of fic regs kind of immediately and uh, Mitch one of our listeners. Um, kind of pointed me towards like Vivian Darkville, and I and I did read a couple of those things, and it, and I did treat it like because they were so long, like I did treat it uh, like a book, so it felt mm-hmm. normal to me, like being on on the subway on my commute, like reading my mm-hmm. my novel. I put some Zina. on my Kindle at one point. Yeah, it was on my iPad, so um, that that was good. But like, I don't seek out like the fake unless like something really kind of happens because like the the latest one that like like a feeling kind of happens in you I think Mm -hmm. where you're like I need to go further yeah I need to look at something that's not in the episode Mm -hmm. and I I just need it outside of my time watching the show and that was for um uh I mean and I I'm so bad I don't even know how to like search stuff on AO3 I made Katie find this for me (laughs) But I, I wanted, I was trying to seek out some Detmer Oshanku from yeah. Star Trek Discovery. Did you find some? There were some, yeah. I didn't read them, though. That's but I, they were there. I don't know how to find them. I don't know, know how, how to use AO3. I, I, guys, I don't. What is I this have, admission? I have one, but I don't know You're how to use it. You're kicked out of fangirl. I'm really bad. <laughs> I'm like, get off my lawn. AO3. <laughs> like, really, really bad. <laughs> But yeah, it's like, um, it's what Katie said. I'm also like very like visual as far as like um, participating in fandom with like vids yeah, and fan I, mixes and I, stuff yeah. and not not particularly writing. I, and then like I said, I did have like a few really terrible ones. And like, I mean, I'm not good. Writing so. is hard. Not that writing <laughs> isn't. But. They're just like very weird. Nobody wants to read mine. It's <laughs> like they're just, just very strange. I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know. It's so ex- I don't know. Vi- I guess vidding. Mm, this is interesting that you said that because I'm like, I don't feel the same way maybe putting a vid out there that I do, like, words. I feel like, I'm like, ooh, words. <laughs> Scary, bad. People won't, like... They like, will. And your your fits like, are good, Katie. I feel like that's carrying some baggage from school. <laughs> school oh. was very words-based. That's true. Yeah. I like that were judged. <laughs> they sent me to, like, the writing camp thing. Oh, well. Whatever. Yeah, I had some writing camps. Too. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess of the three of us, I'm the 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 fic te- writer, the fic writer, the text based fandom yeah. participator. I have not made any vids. I yeah. have only written stuff for fandom. Both yeah, your m- computer literally can't make a vid. Yeah, <laughs> and it goes to sleep after it reads it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but I, but I mean, I wouldn't say I'm an you know, a seasoned fanfic writer, though maybe other people would disagree and laugh at me for thinking I'm not. I've written, like, you know, three fics or something total. Yeah, but how I long are they? I think you're not counting Star Wars. 
That's true. Yes, I first actually started writing fic when I was 14 Mm -hmm. for the Star Wars prequels. (laughs) At that point, uh, um, Phantom Menace had come out. I was both interested but unsatisfied so I was in that perfect place uh-huh. where you you know you need you need more you're inspired <laughs> you kind of sense you're not going to get it from the source <laughs> mm-hmm. so I like wrote, basically wrote my own version of Attack of the Clones and started writing kind of the you know Revenge of the Sith and mm. fell off gotcha. was um, this like before those things came out yeah oh yeah so like you like I have predicted a, those I have movies? a complete MO for fan fiction this is the only kind of fan fiction I've ever written is the spec fic, um, which is speculating. Wrong, because I found your Doctor Who ones in my memories, and it wasn't like that. It wasn't specking. It was normal. Okay. <laughs> specking. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just oh, talk wait. about novel okay. yeah. fiction All for right. the purposes of this. Yeah, this yeah. was a short. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I wrote these no- this novel length uh, Star Wars fic kind of, you know, before I got, because I couldn't wait for the damn movies to come out. So I had to do my own version, which of course I liked loads better than what was in in the movie. Sure, sure. And that was my cross to bear. <laughs> Fast forward like <laughs> 20 years, 15 years. Um, and I did the exact same thing <laughs> um, for Hannibal this time. I wrote uh, a novel length fic in between the first season of the show and the second. Um, There was only about, like, eight months between, so that was really fast for me (laughs) to write a whole novel, like 140,000 words of Mm -hmm. of a fic. Uh, Also, you know, just continuing the story, basically doing my own version of canon. Uh, In that case, that fic actually, like, had an audience and uh, became you know, be- became popular, relatively speaking. BNF, BNF of Hannibal. Mm. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, she was. Don't listen to her. She Ish. Was. There were definitely <laughs> bigger, bigger names. Yeah, you were than heading me. that way. You were heading that way. But, like, mine oh. mine was sort of, like, dark and weird. And I wasn't... Unlike a- Hannibal. It wasn't actually <laughs> Hanagram at first. Like, I literally didn't class it on AO3 as Hanagram because I felt that might be misleading to people because they didn't have sex in the fic, yeah. um, which I think is that's, how you're supposed to approach the slash, is mm-hmm. is there sex? Nope. Take the slash away. Hmm. So I use the and symbol, which I uh, think is funny. That's what you do. Wow. Um, I like the implication that they would. Yes. I was thinking possibly. about that. Yeah, I mean it's complicated. I like I like wrestled with this for ages, and then in the sequel to my novel like Hannibal fanfic, I I put the slash in. Right. Uh, but even that was kind of like they they were only doing it in Hannibal's mind. I so. see. I see. Well, that's, yeah. that's okay. That uh, but yeah, I mean that was like like really fun. And, like I had never really like had that experience of actually like being kind of like deeply active in a fandom Mm -hmm. and like you know posting this fic every week waiting for the show to come out like building an audience and that's why these fics are so long is that you want to like push that thing right to the top of the of the (laughs) list of new fic every time you update so that's how you get eyeballs on your work uh so if you can come up with new things for the characters to do new hurt comfort scenarios (laughs) people are gonna be clicking uh, so yeah, that's, that's so you're assuming fix. you're assuming that you did not have the same audience for your Star Wars fix. Oh, as my Hannibal <laughs> fix, yeah, like you think that, but someone out there you is think like, someone's my like, favorite fix is uh, I've and made it's yours. I've made my Star Wars fix kind of hard to find. So someone I, downloaded I'm, I'm sure that people thing did read them. Did it? I, I I posted them on message boards, which is yeah. how yeah. some of these Xena fix we're going to be discussing right. came to be, yeah. and that. Yeah, it is. That was really fun, though yeah. impossible to find <laughs> chapters. Yeah. Like scrolling through all the posts looking oh, for, okay, here's oh a new God. chapter of my This, this reminds me of Tumblr. Yeah, when like people start posting on Tumblr, yeah. it just gets lost. I am. Um, the same, yeah, with like the old Yahoo groups and things. That's mm-hmm. what I did in, with the Buffy stuff in high school. Mm-hmm. And yeah, a lot of Xenofic is lost to time, which. You know, is bad and good, maybe. I don't know. Like, does everybody want their stuff saved? I don't know. Who knows? I transcribed an episode of Earth 2 once. Does that count as... No, just in in a notebook. Oh, just in a... Wow! (laughs) 
I mean, I think that's the same instinct. Is this kind of I want to be in the world of the yeah, show? How do a really, I do really that? Good episode. Yeah. <laughs> I was very secretive about my Star Wars fic. I, I would like. <laughs> well, I, now everyone knows. I, ah. <laughs> I didn't tell like anybody, you know, my family that I was doing this, and like I once again was updating very regularly. Uh, like I think there, like every few days. Whoa. I was in high school. I had nothing oh better to God. do. Um, and like we went on vacation, and I had to come up with reasons for going to the internet cafe. Oh, oh that's so my funny. God. <laughs> Gotta keep up the big yeah. no breaks allowed. No breaks allowed. <laughs> That's wow. funny. That's yeah. really funny. But well, someone was very grateful for that update. I'm that's, sure. That's what you I'm should sure. think about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Xenofix, should we uh, should we get Xenofix into that huge. part now? Xenofix yeah. Is so much. So the first the first question was kind of about like just deep dive into just the world of Xenofix. Yeah. Deeper dive. Um, deeper dive, which kind of also wraps into the idea of um, the question from Shelby about the how the show. Right. Yeah. yeah. What is fan fiction? Why is fan fiction? <laughs> well, it seems like if we're just going on, like, you know, what was Xena fanfic when it first started getting written? Mm, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, would be like 1995. Because right. it does seem like like people are writing it right away. I'm very impressed to see that immediately people are like, we need we need the slash. We need the slash. Bring, bring us the slash. A tale as old as time, <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, but but uh, uh, unique to possibly unique to Xena fic is that they, rather than call it slash, they call it alt. Alt. Yeah, yeah. That the I the one of my favorite things about Xena is that it was kind of like off in its own world doing its own thing. It's not that other fandoms didn't have the same stuff, but Xena was kind of coming up with its own vocabulary and kind of just, like, building its own um, rules and words and things for, for, like, what it was up to, um, which is just really cool, I think, because, yeah. you know, it's, a, you know, fanfic, we're not going to sit here and deep dive all the way back to what is fanfic, like, you know, everything Zines. before, <laughs> everything before 1700 is Bible fan fiction, and then <laughs> people doing art, and then <laughs> la-di-da, and then, <laughs> you know, Dickens and people do, wait, like, waiting on stories and things, and the et cetera, through time, and then, exactly, um, <laughs> You know, there's that that whole thing. Um, that's not what this. You can go read an article. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I think like it's not that long between like the kind of modern concept of fanfic that I think we're aware of, with which probably is Star Trek, the original mm-hmm. series, and Xena. There really is not like that much twenty something years. Yeah. Um, in between so it's not that long you just get the internet um, really appearing which I think is what like kind of changes everything and kind of uh, changes everything about how um, people involved in the show like interact with it Um, so yeah so like I think like there's a there's a good article on whoosh you can read that's kind of like a history of how Xenofic kind of started appearing and things like that. And um, um, like we were kind of saying, people were posting on listservs and email groups and blah, 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 blah. And and then um, I believe it's uh, Kim Taborn in the article was kind of saying like, these fix are just, you can't find them again. Just much like you were saying. Into the either. It's yeah. just gone. So like um, the thing I think that kind of happened at that time was like people were like, we need to put these in a place. Um, so then I think we started getting a few, is archive the right word? Yeah. I guess, yeah. Definitely. Um, uh, where, like, people could collect everything, and then um, going through all this stuff, I was kind of reminded of ye olde internet, where, like, one of the things that I think authors did was, like, people had their own pages. You know, you yeah. had your own Xena, GeoCities, oh. whatever, la di da and then there's, like, web rings and things like that to, like, kind of tie right. everything together. Um, and then, so it was kind of, like, unlike, unlike, well, I guess once you have the bigger archives, that is kind of, like, an archive of our own, but it was kind of, like, hard to find things, I feel like, because like, people would post things, like, every which way, like, on your own site and things like that. So there was a lot more... Um, 
I feel like you don't see this as much, although I could be totally wrong because I don't participate in fandom quite this way, but like kind of like the big review sites that kind of would aggregate things and be like, you have to read this. Yeah. Like, this is so good, it gets an award. To me, that feels very unique to Xena. I mean, I, I, yeah, similarly, like I've been, you know, in some fandoms that did stuff with fan fiction, but I don't, I don't ever remember seeing like a tastemaker the way Lunacy yeah. and, yeah, that's and big... their uh, fic reviews for Xena yeah. seems to have been, like, you know, really actually just, like, propelling uh, individual writers to prominence. Like, yeah, I, I feel like at least, like, in my experience, it's much more, you know, yeah. at random how that tends to happen. Yeah. You don't have one person saying, hey, everybody, read this. This gets my sign of approval right which is interesting yeah. it's like kind of good it's good well i don't i don't, th- don't want to use the word bad but it's like it's interesting because like who decides what's good lunacy a z-night named lunacy yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> appropriately named lunacy mm-hmm. and yeah their reviews became so influential that people began to Tailor their fix to Lunacy's taste. Oh Lunacy my gosh. did not like seeing uh, Zena and Gabs even flirt with other people. Oh, like, wow. so like it was literally referred to by uh, fic uh, authors and readers as the Lunacy Factor. Wow, oh my goodness! If, wow, if this you if you wanted to get read and and wanted to get popular, yeah, come I mean, on. It makes but also sense. everybody, you know. <laughs> who, who, who to see Gabs to together? And yeah, I'm like, who's putting other else? people that they're flirting with? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, uh, to, to, well, to your point, like, um, going back to kind of, like, Xena's little little bubble world of, of fanfic, um, there there was a ton of, like, general fic, like, at the beginning, which is just, yeah. like, mm-hmm. plot ba- You know, you're, like, you want yeah, to hear more and the show. Yeah, like, yeah, like, the show. But like, like, you're watching the show. I, like, never read that kind of stuff. If it's just like I, yeah, li- I like that stuff I know you, a lot. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I like just I don't know. I like you wanted an episodic I, Zena I love, Gabs I adventure. Love myself some Jen. <laughs> but it's like it's interesting because like Zena now, oh, this is this is like this is what's good about like the deep dive because I feel like there's like contextualization going on of like the show at the time and the show now and how we like look at the show. Yeah. But like when you're looking at you know, 1996, 97, 98, like, you know, seasons one, two, three, uh, and, like, really early. Like, so the, the people who were out there writing Slash, like, it's in, Fem Slash, it's, you know, it's in the show. It's in the show, but it's not, you know. And we're talking about the late 90s, so it's, like, every single fic has to have this humongous disclaimer on it that mm-hmm. if I saw today, I would be like, what the fuck? But, like, in 1997, you get these huge disclaimers, like, this story features two women yeah. in a romantic relationship. If you don't like it, do not read it. Fuck right off. You know? Yeah. Like, but if you saw that today... It's so I'd big, like, that you know, one. Just the concept that you have to put this warning like oh no there's gays in this look out if you don't like it <laughs> run away um well to, to be fair so there's a the lot alt, of so you had to have yeah the, but to me alt is the show i know <laughs> yeah, i think it's <laughs> really funny that it stands for alternative and you're like alternative to alternative what, to what? <laughs> well <laughs> I think it reflects like much like the show started. They were, you know, mm-hmm. we're going to make them straight. Of course. And then it's like, uh-oh, no, yeah. never mind. And these terms, you know, clearly evolved very early. Even, you know, we've yeah. talked about how subtext is main text, you know. Subtext mm-hmm. as a term was invented when the show seemed like they might not actually make good on this stuff. Yeah. Like, it is really interesting to read the really early fic where, you know, people are just invested, not even in Xena and Gabrielle having sex, but just Xena respecting Gabrielle. <laughs> you know, it's that early yeah. in the, the story that people are like, I just want people to see Gabrielle as her equal. You know? yeah. <laughs> but at that point, she's like this little, little ridiculous baby. little schmo baby. That's the journey. Oh. But yeah, I, 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 
find that interesting in the categorizations of early Xena that you have. General yeah. means it's, it's all fine, it's, it's a show like that, and then alt is mm-hmm. where, you know, you're going to find your romance and your uh, right. lesbian relationships and things, and it's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's the show. Um, and, th- and then it was very, very early on as well that, like, the other bigger category um, in Xenafic appeared uh, after the Xena Scrolls aired, which we definitely talked touched on, in our Xena Scrolls episode, which is the Uber fic mm-hmm. genre, um, which um, I was interested to learn uh, once again in, and there was an article on Woosh that I already mentioned that was like the history of fic, but then on Lunacy's aforementioned site, there's an addendum to this article that says some of the stuff in that article was incorrect about the origin of Ubers. And I must point out, according to this addendum, that the sort of idea of this kind of alternate version yeah. of the characters did seem to have its origin on Hercules. Boo. <laughs> or with oh, Hercules, in but, Hercules' yeah. fandom. Like in those episodes that are set in modern day LA. No, no, no. Not even that. I don't think, I think it's like, it's like before the Xena Scrolls aired. But Xena and Gabrielle exist as characters because Xena is on. There is an Uber esque story or stories with Hercules, Aeolus, Xena, and Gabrielle in a Uber esque setting uh, that is like in the the fandom of Hercules. I see, not, not Xena. Xena. So it doesn't count. <laughs> her, her fandom. Um, um, I do think it's really interesting and telling um, that there's so much debate about who who wrote mm. the first Uber. It shows just yeah. how big that subgenre became, right? And just how like studied it was. Like that's what really strikes me is that like basically from the minute people started writing these fix, I think the kind of the BNF of the fandom looked at it and said, wow, this is special. You know, we have this thing that no one else is doing in fandom and we need to sort of chronicle it, yeah. figure out, fi- figure it out. And and it seems like there were even debates about like, you know, what counts as Uber and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. Like really Yeah, what does, like, do you know any of that? Because I was just thinking about like a lot of my fanfic stuff is like from the heyday of Live Journal and like with the fandoms that were on at the time. So pardon the these crazy flashbacks, <laughs> but like Stargate Atlantis okay. had a really huge like slash pairing, like two dudes, uh, McShep. And um, I like was like, why is this so popular? And I so I like, clicked it or whatever. <laughs> and then it was like one of them was like a fic about how Shepard and McKay are ice cubes in an ice cube tray. <laughs> and it's like yeah, they're, they're love. particularly cracky. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then there was another one where they do were they socks melt, melt into each other. They probably oh, do. There's another one where they were sexy. socks. Like oh. it was just like all sorts of these crazy things. And I was like, does that count as an Uber? Um, because <laughs> they are them, but they're like, but not. they're also socks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from you know, I'm I'm not sure what other people would say, but one unique aspect of Ubers to me, and you know, AU is huge in other fandoms, yeah. which AU stands for alternate universe. Mm-hmm. You know, you have like. Captain America and Bucky both work at Starbucks, you know. Um, (laughs) But I think the difference there, well, there are lots of differences, but one of the main differences there is that you would still have, you know, Steve and Bucky, you know. Whereas in Ubers, you don't even have that very simple designator of the character names, names, you know. So you can literally just invent an entirely unique story that you can publish with literally no alterna- mm. alterations because you have scrubbed <laughs> canon out of it. And, right. and that's actually technically supported by the canon mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Zeta and Gav's souls are yeah. going to be reborn in these new bodies. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That's ice. Yum. <laughs> Yum. Your ice cubes. Uh-oh. Is it Shepard no. and <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, sorry, love. what you were saying um, about Mel and Janice. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I'm, I wonder if people debated whether or not Mel and Janice should count as Ubers, because they kind of at least break 
the pattern that fandom would basically establish, which is that, you know, Xena Ubers are like, you know, Xena S, mm-hmm. Gabs Ubers are Gabs S. Xena yeah. you know, Girls has the very funny role switching. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it seems like that was not something that mm. was picked up in fic other than fic about Mel and Janice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that makes sense. And that, of course, totally like you would. You need Zena to be the tall, dark one because she has a different name and a different <laughs> job, and right. take, you know, is set in a different time. Yeah. So, like you know, you got to preserve the essence a little more explicitly than I think Zena Scrolls world does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Zena Scrolls also um, has this like. You know, the the mechanics of the soulmate connection in Xena Scrolls are kind of creepy. Because mm. you have, you know, Xena and Gabs literally, like, possess... Well, well, at least Mel is possessed by the soul of Xena <laughs> um, in the episode. And I thought it was really interesting to read, like, a couple of the fix to see, like, how they deal with that. And they do. Like, mm. they'll have, like... Um, I think this became a staple, at least, for Mel and Janice. They do, like flashbacks to Xena and Gab. So they're actually sort of like half uber thick, half mm. alt thick. Nice. Genre smoosh. <laughs> um, but this one fic uh, that I maybe was like, honestly, my favorite of all the fics that I read as research for this podcast uh, is this one called The Hitchhiker by Bongo Bear, uh, which is an uber in the like you know, definitive sense, and that you have, like, a woman named Gwen, who is Gabs, uh, and a woman named Alex, who is Xena. Alex knows she's Xena. Mm. Gwen does not know she's Gabs. So she, she meets Alex and is attracted to her, and Alex is trying to seduce her, and Gwen is into it, but shy, and then, like, has a blackout. Like in the mm-hmm. midst of being seduced, gotcha. and ha- ha- sort of has this fantasy of being Gabrielle and wakes up the next morning and is like, What the fuck? <laughs> I blacked out. I feel really weird about oh this. God. This is uncomfortable. <laughs> Alex explains, you know, the whole Thing. soulmate connection to her. <laughs> Gwen is like, I free will, man. I mean, we, we, <laughs> we as podcasters have talked about yeah. you know, how that is really romantic, but really, you know, kind of like taking away their ability to make choices. And that's exactly what Gwen says oh in this God. fic. Uh, but then, you know, Alex kisses her a bunch and she's like, all right, well, we'll yeah, it's fine. We'll figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but, you know, I really appreciate it. Like, this is like, this is what I love in fan fiction is, you know, Bongo Bear is like taking this idea that was sort of just tossed there in the show to be cool. Like, oh, now Mel is Xena. Like, that's mm-hmm. great because she can like rip her skirt and start kicking people. That's <laughs> that's why they did that. But Bongo Bear was like, I see, I want to problematize this. I see mm-hmm. a lot of like interesting possibilities here. What does this actually mean for the yeah. descendants of Xena and Gabs? Like that they are forced to be together by these souls of women who died thousands of years ago and should just kind of sit back and, oh like, God. let it be. Um, so, yeah, I, I really was, like, into that fic. Oh, that, wow. That's my kind of Uber. That All right. Good. And that is that, like, begs the question of, like, you know, Xena Scrolls kind of is the first thing that brings up this kind of connection early, very early on in the show. And, like, fandom takes off from there with them being soulmates and you have like huge you know one of the most popular series i think throughout the run of the show was melissa good's like soulmate series which is like all the like you know it's totally surrounds they're being connected um and then like on the show by the time you get to later seasons it's like oh here's this my all soulmate this stuff Gabrielle. Happening. and like <laughs> then you start getting you know, in yeah. So Missy, Missy predicted that. I get, yeah, I get yeah. That. And then, the, um, you know, because and then you do see them throughout time being these other characters by the end of season four. Um, that kind of like starts that, and like Fick had already been doing that. Yeah. So it's like I think we'll never precisely know. We'll never know like what fanfics were read by <laughs> the cat, like the not the cast and crew and writers of the show. I feel like. Unless they have name checked them somewhere. Yeah, as far as we know, that as they far have as we read. Know, Steve Sears must have read some. Missy Good. Missy Good, yeah. 
Uh, um, but other than that, you know, they can neither confirm nor deny. Well, they deny for legal reasons. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but at wonder. the same time, it's like, you know, they're on message boards and, you know, they're like interacting with the fandom. So, like, there is this, like, very intense, I think, cross pollination between the fandom and Xena, the show. Like, if there was no fandom writing all this fanfic, what would the later seasons look like? I don't know that it would look the same. Yeah, but I do. Th- I do think it's maybe not a matter a matter of you know the people involved actually reading the fic so much as it is fandom or, or fanfic being used to solidify kind of an ideology within the fandom. So like for Xena, you know, they write these fics that are deeply romantic and erotic, and that really convinces the fandom hey you know Zena and Gabrielle are, you know are going to be together forever uh, and if that is what the fandom says these characters are that definitely mm. gets back to the creators so yeah mm-hmm. I I generally am skeptical that creators are like reading people's mm. fix in part just because I don't want them to read mine <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and that you know everybody has like you know, but why don't you like? Why don't? Why is it a problem if like Brian Fuller reads your fic? I just like what's he gonna do? He's gonna write you a comment being like to. this is bad. I mean, now that it's done and you know I've I've finished the fic and I'm away from that world now I don't care. If I got an email from Brian Fuller being like, hey, I really liked your fic, I'd be like, oh, thanks, Brian Fuller. The fourth wall, like, yeah, but like the only the fourth wall yeah. that we have like a bigger problem with, I think, than a lot of people. Yeah. I guess I don't have that problem. Like if, the it's, if it's complimentary, decks finding my Imzadi hilarious Riza silly sex right. playlist that was like for funsies that That's like great. not like put me on the floor because you don't like I just like you don't want I don't know I feel like you don't Why want the people not? in charge to see your silliness <laughs> I think for me yeah it is a kind of like I I felt I couldn't like write that stuff and create that stuff if there was even a, you know a chance that the people in, but in it you were writing it. it you were like writing it because you were like my story's better than what I'm seeing yeah therefore well, that's, that's it, your, right? your confidence I, is like huge it's coming from this place of exclusion like I'm this fan watching the pictures on my tv I don't have a say in where this show goes but you but should on my computer, which should reads fan you? fiction. You should have. Oh, <laughs> you think fans should have a say where the show? Well, goes? I I think that based on our um, uh, participating in the Ashes to Ashes fan, oh. where we had come up exactly with where we wanted the show to go, and uh-huh. it did not. And go they there. were on those message boards, and they Shh. took it opposite that it was personal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. okay. But no. Back to your point, Liv. Um, I think that it's like. If you got like a letter from Brian Fuller, right, being like, "Wow, your fig's so great," Brian whatever. Fuller, write me. That's a compliment mm-hmm. to you. The thing that you don't want to receive is a cease and desist. Right. Yeah. That's oh, all. Yes. That's, that's the. That's the. That's, the, that's the worst thing. Everything else is fine. Like, what is the problem with getting a compliment from like the thing? Well, I think it's maybe just like you're right. There's no problem with compliments, but this is like a, a deeper and thornier issue. You know, there have been. Uh, cases where fans have felt exposed and uncomfortable because, say, their Sherlock erotic fic was read by the actors at an event. Like, uh, yeah, but, like, that. to laugh Without at their it. their consent. To, exactly. laugh, to at laugh at it. it. Yeah. Okay, so that's really, really bad. But um, on the other hand, it's like, if it's a really good, though, I don't know how good those were. <laughs> I don't know. See, I bet they were so, great. I bet they were great. Yeah. No, but I wa- I am glad that you mentioned season desist because I also wanted in the like our historical aspect of Xena Fic like to point out too that like the I think that fic and like nerdy stuff and mainstream nerdiness is like so ubiquitous now, yeah. um, uh, especially. I would probably say because people who are younger adults now grew up with Harry Potter and like Harry Potter fic and like it just is like huge, 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 huge. Um, and we can talk about the, that stuff too. Where, where like up until, I mean, people are still doing it, but my point is that I think at this time it was like so much scarier to put something on the internet because it fair use people didn't really understand Mm -hmm. like you would get cease and desists from um 
you know, the networks and things like that. So it was like, it was just an interesting time to, I think, be like putting stuff online because you had to then also keep putting like, this is for fun, please. It's not, I'm not profiting off this. Please, please, please. Um, Which like, I thought was another interesting thing to like kind of keep seeing because I don't think you see that as much on, I think you still see it on vids, um, but I don't think you really see it. I think that people have mostly given up on like <laughs> that kind of thing because yeah it's just unstoppable and huge and like um the authors who have had issues like they still have issues but like I don't know, they can't really do anything about it yeah um, I don't know if it's like is it is it really a problem with fanfic I, I feel like that that's become like a problem more of like, like the the vidding or maybe I don't even know if fan art counts as a thing but like recently like so many um actual like studios and like networks have like embraced fandom quote unquote right. that's what I'm saying. in it's the sense where they like is. use fan works to like you know promote their seasons and like don't mm-hmm. compensate the artist yeah but that's what i mean like but that's the thing is yeah. like if you're like you know the one who wins you're like hey look at me hey. my poster is used for season four of the <laughs> vampire diary i mean it's yeah, it's a little bit of a Pandora's box yeah. when the fourth wall falls away, which is yeah. why I like keeping it up. Yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, to, I, I kind of brought it up just to the, the credit of the Xena showrunners and writers and stuff that they loved it. I feel like that it was like wholeheartedly embraced to the point where yeah. um, fic writers were hired like to right. kind of yeah. Yeah. spruce up the show. Like, <laughs> and we know her, um, her versus, stuff is really like, good. You know, Diana Gable, John Turner Martin running around being like, please don't write fan fiction. Yeah. But, it's frustrating. Uh, yeah. There's a famous Game of Thrones and uh, fanfic. Rice, and Rice, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's a famous Game of Thrones fanfic uh, that like finishes the books for Krum. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I mean, what if Gurm is writing it (laughs) in the ultimate, (laughs) the ultimate? He's against fanfic because he has to be publicly, doesn't want you to know that that's him. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Uh, but yeah, I just like all these things that I kind of forgot about from like high school and like yeah. this time period where it was just like really like all the disclaimers and all of yeah. this stuff that um, it is really interesting how much uh, Xena fandom influenced like the show yeah. itself um, in, in that direction. I feel like we haven't really talked that we've kind of talked about it for like ourselves, but mm. um, with the show itself there were i like in any fandom i think there was a lot of fic that just started coming out in season three and beyond just where people were like really dissatisfied with everything that was going on yeah <laughs> so, that was a like, rough you period a <laughs> and you had that bl- the blessed like hiatus uh-huh. like that's the thing that really <laughs> gets you know the the fandom is on fire during the hiatus yeah. exactly it keeps you going fanfic yeah. like you, you need to feed that like yeah fire for 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 more more content i was very struck Um, by like reading about a journey of soulmates which is like the name of missy's long running series it's so it's there's so much it's like long these these are not the correct numbers but it's like kind of true it's like there's like 20 different stories maybe in the series and then like each story has like Anywhere from like ten to thirty chapters each that are all oh, wow. each chapter is really long. It's like <laughs> it's not even like this is a novel. This is like se- this is many several novels. Wow. Yeah, it's gotta yeah. be like a million words. Yeah, it's gotta be. Yeah. Um, I, so Missy started writing uh, right after the quest came out, which in terms of timing is pretty great. That's right when I think you know the subtexting audience must have had a massive surge Mm. because anyone who didn't pick up on it (laughs) prior to that kiss may may have finally noticed yeah uh so then you have missy writing her very long plotty romantic stories um which aren't like openly explicit she kind of like fades to black on Mm -hmm. the sex scenes which i I was surprised because i feel like these Mm days like in in contemporary fandom uh not a lot of the sex the sexy stories are the ones that are the most popular right? yeah yeah so it's interesting yeah. that in the late 90s early 2000s missy's work was kind of like read by the most people because that kind of it covered appealed, on the basis, covered more, on the basis yeah, exactly like if you wanted to, yeah. yeah if you didn't like want to read that it wasn't there 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so I was very struck there's, by. There's still like se- I've read um, half of the Soulmate series, and it's got like really nice like scenes like that. And then yeah, then you do go ah, it's fade to black. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Katie wanted more. Hey. But like yeah, but like I I really liked what I read. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> did you get to the story that kind of was Missy's version of the rift? Did I? I don't know. <laughs> like, oh, I'm not sure. Tell me more about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, Darkness Falls. No, which I didn't Missy get that far. Wrote, yeah, after obviously after season three uh, is a reaction to season three. I, I thought that was so fascinating that like a lot of people were saying, as you just said, Katie, uh, like as the show kind of got darker and more difficult, like people found this refuge in fanfic, and even uh-huh. people would like you know literally rage quit the show, continued uh-huh. to participate in fandom reading fic and i think missy's stories you know became even more popular because people saw them as an alternative to canon uh you know here here this was their happy place Mm -hmm. was soulmates uh so then it's really interesting that she made the choice to actually incorporate a version of the rift into her universe uh Mm -hmm. and the people who really liked it said that it was you know, a better version of the Rift. I'm sure. A more emotional, <laughs> yes, <I'm> character-driven, <laughs> you know, they don't just solve it all in a musical. Well, that's what people <laughs> say, I think, uh, in fanfic's favor, a, a lot of times is that, like, it gets, like, people are like, oh, it goes so much deeper than, the sh- like, the show. Like, yeah. fix can get just get right and, and, and it's just true. It, it's it can so, be it, very it true. Can it's be just, true. It's just a very different medium, and I mm-hmm. think um, it just depends on, like, how you experience things. You know, um, you get to just dive directly into these characters' inner lives. And, like, you know, especially thinking about those early Gabrielle fix where people were kind of making this argument that Gabrielle was, like, a full human being and not just the annoying little sidekick. Like, that's actually really important that you can, like, show show Gabrielle's thoughts and you're like oh wow so that's what that Uh, wacky little redhead is thinking you know I think for me like that when I start and people are gonna hate me saying this maybe I don't (laughs) I don't care I think that like there's a I think it can be a little bit mm, I think because it's me and Vera kind of to like what you said before about like kind of taking taking longer to kind of reconcile your relationship with canon yeah maybe is the way to say it but like there are I feel like you saw people like complaining about the show and the characterizations on the show because you get so used to reading lots of fic and the way the characters are in the fic mm-hmm. um especially like over the hiatus and things like that yeah that like you don't think that the show is doing it right anymore yes. yeah I, I, I can't really say either. I, I, but, like, I always come from a place where, like, the show is doing what the show is doing. Yeah, <laughs> like, but that's, like, a thing. Um, that's a huge thing with yeah, multiple television series yeah. uh, that we know. Yeah. <laughs> where, like, fandom sort of, like, that's overtakes the canon and yeah. people want only the fake versions of the things yeah. and not the actual... Right. It's just interesting. It's interesting. I've been there. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that is kind of my experience that I was alluding to earlier with my Hannibal fix is, is yeah, I, I wrote this version of the show in the middle of the show airing. And then when the show did come back, you know, I wasn't satisfied. I yeah. had literally written the fix. You did fix. that to yourself. You did that to yourself. Yeah, yeah. you did. It's not no, like no, I was so conscious of it. I wrote a whole essay <laughs> about it, which I guess I could link to on, on my Tumblr called On Building Sandcastles. Well, like the metaphor being that I had built this giant sandcastle mansion to live in waiting for the show to come back and then the giant the waves <laughs> of the show came and knocked yeah. down the castle but <laughs> I refused to let it be knocked down and just lived in that damn yeah. thing for the rest, yeah. so for the I rest mean, of the show. I mean we're making happy. It's like partly that's the whole thing with Phantom anyway is that mostly trying to do these things for fun, right? Yeah. So I-, I saw an interesting quote uh, from 
these two authors writing on Woosh uh, for Woosh's second all fanfic issue. That's how popular fanfic was in Xena fandom. Woosh had to do two issues <laughs> uh, just covering essays related to fanfic. So this particular essay is about uh, Vivian Darkblue, who, ah, who you transition. may recall one of our questions uh, was about this particular author. Uh, Vivian Darkbloom, uh, one of her big fix is uh, a Mel Janis series mm-hmm. uh, that starts with a fic called All the Colors of the World. Um, so these two authors, who are named Nancy Amazon and Ewok, are writing about uh, Mel and Janis in All the Colors of the World. They say... Uh, Zena and Gabrielle are present in the fic only in as much as the shadows of their past lives are cast upon their descendants. This shadow, the weight of a past, not even their own, sins of the past, anyone, <laughs> is one of the main themes of Dark Bloom's Mel and Janice series. Someone a little more academic than myself might decide here that this was a good spot to throw in a discussion of how a bard who decides to write uber fan fiction has a similar shadow to contend with. The themes, concerns, traditions, and formula, okay, so I mean the cliches, of the television show, I'm going to add here, the canon, Mm. Um, Mm. the antihero, the redeeming power of love, the psychotic blonde with a grudge, have to be fitted into the story somewhere. And somehow, if you're going to dare call it Uber Xena fan fiction, how do you do that? To juggle all these bits and pieces which demand to be addressed and still manage to tell your own story. Now, there is something I bet Janice and Mel could sympathize with entirely. So Whoa. I thought that was really fun that, you know, these characters who, like, in canon are wrestling with, why do Xena and Gabs <laughs> haunt me so? Oh my God. <laughs> well, I want to be my own person is, uh. is, a, is a metaphor for what fandom does, which is mm. at first you're like, yeah, haunt me, ladies. And then you're like, no, let me be my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> So is this my way of uh, transitioning into talking about Vivian Darkbloom? Yeah. I, yeah, I think, and Vivian Darkbloom is great because I feel like as an author, she wrote every genre almost. I don't know if maybe Jen doesn't count, but like like genres we haven't even talked about, like um, the Conqueror fic yes. um, wrote Ubers, wrote Alt. What am I missing? I think those Jen? are the big <laughs> Probably, probably, probably Jen is some the big ones. <laughs> and her tones are so different, which I think is really impressive. Like, she's kind of a chameleon in voice, because, like, her Mel Janice is very kind of serious, but, you know, with some humor thrown yeah. in. Whereas, like, her white trash Uber oh is just, like, this right. wacky invention. Yeah. yeah. I think that says a lot about her personality and, like, from reading some interviews uh, with her. She just seems like she has a really good sense of humor, so therefore it comes out in that stuff. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of long Xenofic, and Vivian Darkbloom wrote a lot of it, I think. <laughs> um, I think that was part of the question, too, just, like, the phenomenon of, like, these just really long long story which as i've said you know um, i'm sure missy good being so popular encouraged people to write long but mm-hmm. also you know writing many 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 installments posted regularly yeah. is what got you read exactly that's what i was thinking i was like i, I was like part of when i was thinking about this question i was like i feel like there's kind of like a simple probably a simple like explanation for you know why these stories and these authors like become like bnfs in the fandom and it's because number one you're prolific number two but it's actually really good yeah like and so if you're prolific and it's really good then yeah you're gonna become like really popular in the fandom um and i think um what was so cool about um the long fic in xena specifically is is that like a lot of it people were able to do the quote unquote file off the serial numbers for and then actually go and publish novels like 
way before Who's He What's It. E.L. James. Who's He What's It. I couldn't think of her name. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, doing, um, we're doing that, you know, and it kind of became... It kind of became a thing that, you know, mainstream articles were being written about, like, oh, my God, Fifty Shades is a twilight. (laughs) What? Um, Civilization is ending. You know, (laughs) and then all the arguments and, like, what is fanfic since, like, the dawn of time, like, you know, la-di-da-di-da. But, um, you know, like, things like Wicked or whatever. Um, But Xenofic, like, these long stories could just be, like, there's a lot of lesbian fic not a lot a lot of published professional lesbian stories that are literally xenoprofic which is yeah. like really really fun i think so yeah um, it's a fun game to sort of like look at what's been published in like the you know late 90s or 2000s yeah. or whatever and be like is it xena is it like, all yeah. dark haired one short blonde one <laughs> yeah but it's a, but it, like yeah it's like i wonder like what makes people i mean you write long fix like I really like to read one shots just because I just I feel like I don't I don't know my headspace like I just want to read something before bed and it's over <laughs> <laughs> um, and like that's kind of like mostly how I like read fic so it's like interesting and really cool that like so many people like just write these really long intricate stories and obviously like you love to write and you're really good at it and you're gonna like hook people much like the television show itself yeah. like it goes right. it goes back to you know aforementioned. Yeah, if you're good at it, right, as, like, a reader, yeah. uh, you find one and you start reading it. And if it's good, you'll want to continue, mm-hmm. and right? And subscribe on AO3. And yeah. then like, what? What? How do you search? Um, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but, like, even Dark Bloom, like, particularly, I think, is a great example but just because the quality of the writing is really great. So good. Um, and there's a lot of different stories uh, to read. I read one of the um, Mel and Janice series that you were talking about. Um, and it is, these ones are on AO3. Um, and on AO3, they're called the City of Illuminations, I think. Wait, maybe I, let me just check. City of Illumination series. And the one that I really loved in it was called Venezia and it is so cool but it's like really up my alley because it's like based on Don't Look Now which is a weird creepy um, 70s horror movie starring Donald Sutherland set in Venice Um, and it has like a plot that surrounds uh, older Mel in the late 60s um, who at a certain point in time I think um, Janice died um and then there's a 18 year old girl in venice who looks just like her Whoa, and that's like so creepy Gabrielle. oh my god and it's such a good idea so it's like there's a, there's a lot of creepy there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of tropes in it uh, and it's really good um uh, but if you don't like age gap and things like that um, mm. <laughs> i would maybe steer clear but it i really enjoyed that one um, of hers. That's, then, wait, that's the one that she's, uh, it's by Vivian, quote, Mambo Italiano, <laughs> Dark Bloom. Is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, so I really love that one. Um, so yeah, you have all these great Ubers, and then um, the you mentioned the trailer. The trailer park yes. series, yes. yeah. That one's really, yeah, yeah it's fun. Which is probably very problematic, but also hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> Come on. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really funny to read Vivian Darkloon's explanation for the trailer park universe yeah, that, like, like yeah. in Ubers, like, everybody tended to have a very, like, bourgeois job, you know? They were always, like, <laughs> high-powered lawyers or business executives or, like, the president. Um, <laughs> so, like, she wanted to write a version where they just, like... It's kind of a critique yeah, of the yeah. genre. Exactly, yeah. which is something we haven't talked about, you know, that um, fan fiction isn't only a reaction to the source, to the show. Uh, it's also a reaction to the community, to what fandom's doing to mm. other fanfics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely you can look at White Trash as like right. Vivian being like, oh, I'm tired of the lawyers and the cops. Yeah, she said that the the she wanted like the drama to be like whether they're going to go to dinner at Pizza Hut or Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> that is, can be dramatic. Yeah, the one, <laughs> the, the one I read, and this was an. I know you're gonna say this was an early wreck that 
Yeah, Mitch, Mitch, Gibbs, Mitch Gibbs. He also uh, wrecked the trailer park one, which I read some of. Thank um, you, Mitch. Yeah, thank you, Mitch. No, and I it's very, very much enjoyed um, Vivian's uh, infamia, mm-hmm. infamia. I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but you guys all know what I'm talking about, of course. It's the... Um, I, I guess it's conquer, but it's not really. It's really when fates collide. Right. But, but kind of using it it's kinda, of conquer. conquer. Yeah. 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 Again, the, probably the most problematic genre of Xena fanfic that stands A.K.A. the best. Which is the... <laughs> Darkest. Yeah, yeah. Kinkiest. The conquer, conquer fic. Uh, and then sometimes referred to as, um, which is why I say problematic, warrior slave. Mm. Um, definitely problematic. Yeah. We don't, have, we, we don't have a jar anymore, yeah. so you guys love to Where did ima- it, oh, yeah, imagine. Right. Where did it go? Um, <laughs> it's not on the table. It went to a variety of charity. It went to a farm. It went to the um, jar farm. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, and, and that's again another thing I feel like in an episode about fan fiction. Yeah. To kind of mention about fan fiction, um, especially now, I don't know what the show is now that would have the genre of conqueror fic without a whole host of just a lot of issues like happening in fandom where not to say that like probably people didn't like it at the time I'm sure there were people but I feel like fandom 20 years ago had the kind of like don't like don't read messages Mm -hmm. on everything and it was a little bit more like that um this is sort of a tricky subject (laughs) i feel like um because it's i think people are more critical and open today of like you know what you know the stuff that we're doing in fandom means and is more putting out into the world and I don't. I don't think this is like. I don't want to go on like a big tirade. <laughs> I feel like. Um, but my kind of point was. I think that it's great that fandom is and should be a place where you can write these kind of things um, yeah. and have it hopefully be a safer space or place to kind mm-hmm. of write this kind of stuff because it's not the real world, um, and you can explore things. Um, that are darker, more difficult, yeah. I think, in fic. Um, People are still writing it. It's just like sometimes you get the like police, you know, well, comments did, I, of like, how could you possibly yeah, write I this think horrible the, thing? Yeah, you know? there's like, um, there's, yes. How can you ship Raylo? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so there's like a, there's, I think, yeah, there's a spectrum of things happening in fandom now that is, like, that can be, very difficult, I think. Um, some of it's good, and some of it is less good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, what sucks is I feel like I'm frustrated with people on both sides of the debate. Exactly. I feel like the so answer is, is something more nuanced. Like, I do want to protect people. I do think some of the shit people write is harmful. Not mm-hmm. not really conqueror, though. I would read all the conquerors <laughs> yeah. in a heartbeat, it's just happily. Like, like, it, uh, yeah. You know, um, content warnings yeah. and things like right. that. First, that which yeah. is different but than, like, um, a lot of things that, that happen in fandom, like racism and things like yeah. that. Right. I'm more talking about, like, there's just, like, people think that you shouldn't write anything like this mm-hmm. at all because there's, like, rape in it or things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I would disagree. Well, in f- Infemia <laughs> is very good. It is, yeah, not to digress too much. It's I like to 20 it. parts. <laughs> and I was, I read it obviously like all finished. And in fact, Vivian like posted, um, I don't think I took that, but like I, I read on my iPad, but she did include like um, like a Kindle version of it and, and like that's an, awesome. an EPUB. That's awesome. very thoughtful. So like that's very useful. Yeah. And like literally like I read like a like a novel. So I didn't have to worry about like waiting for the parts to come out or anything like that because it was like years later. Um, it seems to have been written over many years, which is interesting too because um, I mean it is 20 parts, so it's, it's very long. Uh, but it seems like the last part she published was on at like 2012. Wow. Yeah. I was like, okay, so when I was reading it, I think we were watching Spartacus at that Mm. point. So to me, it was all like, oh, my God, this is just like right from my brain. I'm like watching Lucy do this, and now here she is doing Ah, this. Ah, fun. So I was like, I wonder, you know, if if like finding out that that like the last part, let's say, was uh, posted in 2012, I was like, oh, my God, like 
was this was this intended to to be like Spartacus focused? But like the earlier parts precede the beginning of Spartacus. So no, um, and it's also uh, she posted a lot of it on Passion Perfect, the Live Journal com, which I wish I knew about because it seems to be like all the slash was in oh. there, <laughs> the fem slash I should say. Oh, well, that's nice. Like, yeah, know. but um, yeah. I didn't even read like fem <laughs> slash until like way later. Yeah, we stink. <laughs> We talked about this. So yeah, she she posted under the Holy Innocent. That was her LJ name, but it's that account is purged. But Katie said that a lot of her stuff is on AO3 under Vivian Dark. Um. Well, there's like I think six or I don't know that whatever she chose so far to put on AO3. Mm -hmm. There's some Xena. That's but it's cool. More like stuff that she's writing now. Well, that's great. I yeah. mean, because like a lot, like when fandoms. people think of I think fanfic now, they they think of Ao3, which right. is good. Yeah, yeah. It's a good that's place. what's rough about Xena. Oh, it's great that there's a lot of sites that are like available now mm -hmm. uh, that you can still access. Because doing research for Xena is like a series of like 403 error or over and over 401, 403, 401, 403, 403. <laughs> <laughs> errors. There's a 401 error, I think. Oh, okay. I maybe, got some yeah. on Vivian Darkbloom's <laughs> okay, site. Okay, maybe uh, right. But like some of the like really big sites that everyone like told us to go to like immediately were like Tom's Xena page and like um there's um Academy of Bards Academy of Bards or World Academy of Bards um and then like the Lunacy Review site um is so that you can see all the reviews sometimes the links are not going to work um and then Mary D's site has tons tons of tons, yes. tons of fic and then still like lots of recs like and, ongoing and Missy Good has her own mm -hmm. website still up with her yeah. work yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and, and Vivian Darkbloom, sorry, also yeah. has a, a working website with yeah. a lot of her work if you can't find it anywhere else. Yeah. Um, but that good that good Mel Janice one is on there. <laughs> I I just well, if you want to read about um, Zeta being a, a Roman emperor-s and Gabs being a gladiator, mm. that's, yeah. that's where you well, should go. What I go. love about like, a lot of the sites, like, if, like the Tom's page or like Bard's, oh, I feel like there's a lot of ones called Bard's, so I feel like I'd... And the writers are called bards. Right. <laughs> correctly. Um, but, like, the, that you can, like, you know, they're all separated out. They're very well organized. And I love the, like, database-ness yeah. and nerdiness of all these archives mm -hmm. for Xenofic. Because you can click Alt. You can click yeah. Warrior, Conqueror, Fic. You can click Uber. Uber. And yeah. go right to all of the Uber. Like, you know, you have to, like, dig. It's, like, categorized. Get what it's you nice. need I real love, fast. I love some categorization. <laughs> Nerds doing this. For us, thank you. Um, it was really fun, though, to go to AO3 and look at the Xena tag there just to see, like, what kind of stuff is being published by the fandom now. Porn. Yeah, of course. Of no, course. I mean, that's not what you're going to say. <laughs> well, well, I was just struck. You know, I was half expecting it to be very similar in mode to these 20-year-old 20 20-year-old 20 stories Uh uh, that that you can find at Tom's or or at Mary D's site. Instead, you find the twenty year olds <laughs> writing what? Yeah, I mean, I was actually very struck that like like on the first page of the Xena tag, like I was immediately seeing very familiar to me fan fanfic tropes like a megaverse. I say uh, with a cringe. If you don't know what a megaverse is, I'm not going to, to tell you. You're just gonna have to live in. You're, you're saying just if we're omegaverse, omega, not a megaverse, not a. I did hear a. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard so too. But yeah. I just to clarify, I understood. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh boy. Uh, or like you know, uh, Xena is a mermaid that washes up on shore, and Gabrielle finds her for some reason. This is I like, love it. This is huge in, in fanfic right now. Mermaid. Wow, mermaid. <laughs> mermaid is big. Okay, cool. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I was like, okay, yeah. All the things you kind of see everywhere else now have kind of filtered into the Xena fix. I think I, I got to read me some of that mermaid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get I that mean, yeah, it's mermaid like, action. When we say comic shop at you, I mean, that was like 10 years yeah, ago, Yeah, right? that's now it's like, mermaid fic keep, yeah. keep up. Keep yeah. up. <laughs> Mostly Omegaverse. <laughs> you know. Is that thanks to Teen Wolf? I think Teen Wolf, like... We are gonna go go there now, are we? I think I think <laughs> Teen Wolf made it big, but it started in Supernatural for sure. Oh right, right, yeah. right. right. Keep forgetting Supernatural exists forever. Supernatural is <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gift. It keeps on giving. I didn't realize you like it was surprising to me to see Omegaverse in a fem slash yeah, ship. Like I I did not know that that happened. How does that work? I, I guess I'm glad to see it. I didn't click. I. 
admit, so I, I can't report back. Yeah. No, but fic is for, you know, everybody. Yeah. Um, that's fun. I like that. AO3 has more one-shots, I think, than the oldie fanfic, maybe. I mean, that's that's why I always go on AO3, because it's easier for me to get, like... To, to read it, To yeah. find... Because you can, like, filter by, like, one chapter only, please. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, offended. <laughs> I, I like a drabble. Either. <laughs> hundred words, please. Thanks. Sometimes those can really hit. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, Vivian Darkbloom had a, a participate in an LJ um, SVU 100 nice. word and travel challenge. Nice. Nice. I do think AO3 has changed things a bit because, you know, it used to be that if you wrote a one shot, there was a huge probability that people wouldn't see it. It would just, you know, disappear. Yeah, whereas yeah. AO3, because of uh, how archived it is and the filtering options yeah you know Whoa. you can have one shots that nice. will find their audience so yeah. i think that's part of why format has diversified a lot yeah. in fandom people are more willing to go short now yeah. than they might have been in the time of xena yeah that's that makes cool. more sense for like why there's so much longer stories and ongoing stories should we uh talk about Ellie's question? Oh, yeah. So the question about Femme Slash um, and why is it not so popular? That's yeah. not what it said. <laughs> basically. It basically Answer, is. it has women. Yeah. I mean, what, that what is... Was, can you read I, I will reread question? Read Ellie's question. Uh, what are your thoughts on the disparity between Femme Slash and other kinds of fanfic? Mm. On a recent ep of Fansplaining, they talked about reader resistance to Femme Slash that features messy women, messy women. and or aggression between the pairings. Except they noted in Xena Gabrielle fandom. Any theories on what makes Xena Gabs immune to this, if you agree that this is true? I mean, starting with the first question, uh, which I do think we've touched on before, um, you know, why is fem slash not as popular as male male slash? Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I, yeah, I think the answer is there are women. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, internalized misogyny. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, I think there are a lot, a, a lot there, of, like, well, it's a there, much more yeah. complicated. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also, like, as, you know, fandom nowadays is huge because it's not as niche as it was a while ago. I feel like with Xena, the fandom is a majority of queer people. Um, so you are going to, and then the main ship is, like, Xena Gabs. Like, they are the main stars of the show yeah. and you don't see that on yeah. other shows in other media like I d- am hard pressed now to name sh- other yeah. shows where mm-hmm. it's just two female leads yeah. and you can have the femme slash right. um, so I, and, I but feel they all like, do the ones that exist all have huge devoted yeah. fandoms and for a reason is, exactly and this yeah. is not this is again not based I'm sure there are studies and then people can correct me at this point in time and like this is just based on like experience going through phantom life but like I do feel like um, there are a majority of more like female identifying writers in fanfic than there are uh, male writers I just feel like a lot of women even queer women write men like, way more than they do women. And it just, like, stems from, I think, just the lack of great female Female characters. characters. I do think, yeah. And, like, yeah. It's true. It's really not internalized misogyny. It's just misogyny. It's just regular. (laughs) Regular garden variety in in Hollywood and Um, in the places where media is created. Yeah, Yeah. And uh, and I think anybody who is straight seems to be, for some reason, like, wants to write, like, two men together. Yeah, uh, because of just being more attracted to men, but that could be based on nothing. Um, I think it's based but, on like, facts. My own, just no, I th- like that's that's fact. Uh, there, from previous conversations about this, like in various fandom circles, like people have said that why they prefer to write men or uh, read, uh, you know, slash fanfic is because they it's easier to like completely destroy male characters versus like a, f- a woman like that's like bad for them versus like you can you know have dean and um whoever on supernatural be like super fucked up like in your <laughs> fic cuz that's fine that's a man you know yeah. but if you like you know do but the same thing like just, to like a female character that's like bad yeah there is always just like this huge problem in fandom of like 
pushing female characters to the side for the for the slash yeah of course but there's that's... not like the reverse but i think that's also due to like the lack of being able to do it with female characters right like yeah. the first thing that came into my head was like you know steve bucky who we already mentioned mm-hmm. um you know and of course like the main heterosexual canon like ship and there is peggy and steve i'm thinking about the movies i don't know anything about the comics oh my god <laughs> um, <laughs> like, um, but like, who do you ship Peggy with? Is There's no other woman. There's no other Pepper. You know, I'm, not, I'm not talking about Agent Carter. We're not going to go there. That's a whole other oh, thing. Oh yeah, that's um, who we ship oh, Peggy. Oh god. With. Well, that was, just, that was reverse Zena. Like example. Is it like reverse Zena? Agent Carter reverse Zena? <laughs> yeah. They got rid of um, it. That was a bad, bad example because yeah. it was so that, popular. Right. Uh, that was extra baggage. I didn't mean to bring in. Um, Never forget. But I kind of just feel like it's, yeah. Like, I kind of, in my head, was doing a thing where I'm like, what are people up to and who are they attracted to? But at the end of the day, I think it is just more like what exists in fandom, what the characters are, what's popular. And, like, a lot of it is just there are a lot of dudes. And better, uh, up until recently, maybe, like, more well-written dudes. Was that the thing? Like, people thought that, like, female characters weren't as... I don't know. Compel I mean, to me, that, it's, you're like, to me that feels it? like a flimsy justification. Yeah, but I don't know. at the same time, I do feel like, you know, it's, it's one of those things where fandom started doing this, you know, got the ball rolling with Kirk and Spock, and mm-hmm. like the legacy of that is, mm-hmm. is that Cute. those kind of ships mm-hmm. remain popular. And, you know, it's kind of a chicken egg situation. It's mm-hmm. like, this is the media we're given, these are the kinds of fan works we make. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that just goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I am curious as uh, representation gets better, as people start to see these the, kind of the stories they were forced to write in fic back in the day mm. now on screen, like, will that change what fan works are? Mm-hmm. You know, will mm-hmm. will people need to need to do slash in the same way where it's like, I need to make this mine. Or it's just like, yeah, yeah it's not more of a like, political like need to use the like space of fandom to like reclaim corporate narrative that we know NBC won't let these two ladies be gay so I gotta put them in here um now maybe it's there's you know there's always new things that need to be like in that space as well but maybe the main thing of like a, a slash relationship is like less like of a it's still a problem, but maybe it's, yeah, less it's, it's of always going to be. It's a huge yeah, problem. Look at like, anything like you I mean you brought up Marvel. Like anything yeah. in Marvel, like needs like yeah. fandom to put them together because they're yeah. never going to be like canon. I mean, yeah, that's why it's like <clears throat> fandom for like mainstream corporate stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we should go just find some smaller but, art. Okay, okay, you're not you're not <laughs> wrong that there is no like there's no show quite like Xena in the right. in the sense that there's just like no male presence. But, like you yeah. know, I mean they're there, but. I'm, yeah, but I mean, they're jocks really are. minimal. Yeah, you just leave <laughs> yeah. out jocks are. It's pretty easy. But he's jocks are also. Yeah, even, like, even something like Killing Eve, you'd have to kind of, you know. I mean, Killing yeah, Eve is, that's that's, that's kind equivalent. of the equivalent. Gentleman Jack. Like, well, I mean, obviously these, these, these are exist, shows, yes. But, um, yes, yeah. yes. But, you know, like, well, I mean, thankfully those women are actually canonically queer in those yeah. things, not like, you know, right. just Slash or whatever. Um, so yeah, it is, it is a handful of shows, like less than a handful really of like just the mains are two ladies because mostly it's like either an ensemble or like you got your like one lady on the program Mm -hmm. doing law or whatever. I don't know what shows are anymore. (laughs) I don't know what shows are anymore. (laughs) But yeah, I think Zena and Gabs are an exception just by being so unique, Mm -hmm. especially at the time and still even now. Yep. Yep. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. dear. Yeah, as to Ellie's question about um, the resistance and fem slash to messy women, I, I feel like I, I haven't really encountered that, so I'm not sure mm. I, I can comment. Yeah. Resistance to messy women. Yeah. Who's messy? I mean, I was wondering if this is just related to the, the issue we were alluding to earlier, which is kind of fandom purity. People uh. who, who, in general, you know, want characters to behave in mm. in in fic that's so um, interesting yeah but um yeah i mean this seems like a very very specific to a female character is messy that's to me a, i want to know what fandom that term. was yeah. like what yeah. fandom were they talking about mm-hmm. about the specific like quote-unquote we'll messy women episode. in that 
in that fandom because I I just think that's just like sort of what we talked about the 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 fact that you know there's no there are no female characters and that the you know straight ladies aren't interested in them in, in women well, there's characters like a, in general even, even just I mean hmm, I like the idea that even just a female character has this like huge burden of representation to be right. perfect in some capacity yeah, yeah. I think there is something to that yeah that women, yeah. women are expected to behave better than men yeah so you have to like want the drama and the messiness, I guess, mm-hmm. as, like, a like fan. The yeah, it's great. Alive. Yeah, I, I assume oh, no, she's dead. Ellie's <laughs> messy, you know, oh, in part is, like, referring to abuse, and, you know, this is obvi- this obviously was a big deal in Xena, like, you know, mm-hmm. violence was a part of the show, uh, violence towards Gabs is a right, thing that which is literally happens in canon. That fix, like, not, yeah. ev- that not every fem slash ship has like violence. I, in it. it sounds like very few of them do, and when they go there, it, there it's is because resistance. messy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe my answer then is that because it is there in the source, it is quite yeah. canonical and an important aspect of Xena's character and of Gabrielle's character, how they, how violence, you know, how they react to violence and how violence shapes them. Mm. Um, so maybe that's part of why Xena is allowed to deal with those issues in a way that other f- fandoms are less, less eager to go there. Gotcha. That, we hadn't mentioned this one word that comes up a lot with fic that you just reminded me of when I was like, Xena's the messiest person alive, and then I was like, oh no, she's dead. Oh. Um, but that, um, we, I mean, we probably touched upon it a little bit, but I don't think anybody ever said the word fix it, mm-hmm. um, and oh, yeah. I don't think we can talk about Xena fic without talking about fix it. and I think they started with the messiness that was season three and the violence. Um, that started creeping in in the rift and people like really, really, really rallied against that. Um, and so I think there was a lot of fic that was trying to like really get to the, either the bottom of it or ignore it or, you know, a, a combination of both everything in between. Um, and then the other big fix it, um, this is a actual, I think another genre of Xena fanfic is the like fit post fin finale yes. fix it like that the, there is so much of that that it kind of constitutes its own category yeah. um and it reminds me again like just to go personal again of like fix it i never because of the way i relate to canon for the most part i'm like the worst why am i in fandom <laughs> like i, I kind only of, love the canon <laughs> i don't love a fix it like mm. i and that's a huge thing of what fic I think does for fandom Mm -hmm. like I think a lot of people kind of go to stories to be like I didn't like that or there's a problem with this so I'm gonna write this fix it and like I don't know if I've ever like hated something well you mentioned Ashes Ashes but I never went to read fic for it like um, I've never like gone and been like oh this occurrence has made me so mad that I must read a story that is gonna like um, heal my emotions but I absolutely understand the desire and need to do that especially for something like a friend in need I'm absolutely not denying that like that right. was very helpful and I think probably cathartic and fantastic for um, a lot of people to have that so like fandom is a great space to kind of do that stuff and, and work out that stuff and and um, fix things in canon I think for me like I'm more interested in like whoa this thing a lot of people hated like, or that didn't like, or that made them mad or sad or whatever, like, that's, that's almost like the fic that I kind of want to go read more. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I want to read something that's like, it's not changing this, but it's like, and I think I do that with vids, I think I did that with, like, my Lost Sky vid, which is a Xena vid, Mm -hmm. uh, for the finale, basically, it's not saying the finale is bad, that was my intention, (laughs) and, or anything like that, um, that's just sort of, like, my way of going, like, ooh, I want to live in this moment like, for longer. Yeah, yeah so um, it's a kind but, of like, fix it. Are interesting. Slow it. Yeah, <laughs> I guess a fix it in the sense that like I was like, here's some stuff that's missing. I'm gonna try and put it like this, and that's my yeah. way of like doing and I it. Think, but I don't want to change. Yeah, we we vetted that. We we did like that uh, American Horror Story Coven vid that was like technically that's technically a fix it in the sense that it like we did showed a thing that wasn't like 
explained in the canon. That was just like a, a really um, straightforward hee hee fem slash vid for like a non canon <laughs> And it didn't actually fix the like horrible death. <laughs> yeah, but it fixed the explanation <laughs> of some stuff. Canon and ended up fixing that death, though. Yeah, it did, it did, it did. Thanks, uh, American Horror Story Apocalypse. I wanted to jump into, like, random lyric uh, a fix it since you brought it up. Um, one of the fix that I read, because, you know, I only read some, but it really stuck with me to this day. Um, it's a Battlestar Galactica fix it for the finale, which I didn't really have a problem with, and I never understood that it was a fix it until, like, later where I read it in the notes and I was like oh offended about it but whatever it's so great um, it's, it has like um, a title the name of this story is your name uh, by Becca Torrey who's an incredible vit- vitter as well um, but yeah if you're interested in revisiting some <laughs> Battlestar Galactica right. feels <laughs> mm. go for it yeah so this is like a huge topic we could be here yeah, all forever. day all night all day yeah. but like uh, Xenophic the best mm-hmm yeah, uh, huge. I'm glad Almost people are still writing. It. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Just this one little show. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and it's still going strong. Mm-hmm. Like, which is like a huge testament to the show, and yeah. like the like extraordinary like dedication of the fan base, mm-hmm. um, and then new people in it, and like interesting to see like how it's changed over time and what people are doing now. Yeah, no, no more alt and gin. <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah. I think the, the line is gone. <laughs> it was interesting in the in that uh, article that we mentioned um, the just like the history of the fic article. There was like a chart, a graph of like how many fics were posted like per month and like per year or whatever, and like what category it was. And it was like at first like the gen, and then like mm-hmm. the one alt one and mm-hmm. then like slowly you saw the numbers like switch Interesting. and then it became like less gen and just like alt 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 yeah <laughs> yeah I mean that's what happens when yeah. fandom gets going it was really cool it was really really cool <laughs> the yeah. birth of the fandom yeah. great fandom excellent writers words for days great mm-hmm. showrunners who are cool with it yep. who let it literally influence the show to the point where you got fic writers on the show mm-hmm. the whole show itself is a giant fan fiction we didn't even talk about how <laughs> gabs is writing the whole show like a big giant fan right. fiction well i think we did talk about that back in xena scrolls yeah <laughs> um which is like a whole thing unto itself where like the fans are literally in it in the show so yeah it's a whole circular cool fun thing um and obviously just like an amazing world that lends itself so well to all these different stories hopefully we answered all your questions yeah because they're like big huge yeah, topics big. <laughs> um and like we can't name check every fic out there because there's so many and there a lot of them are so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, send us more of your recs. Um, go read the ones that we've mentioned. Yeah. And thank you so much for uh, your patronage. Woohoo! Uh, yes, you've... thank you. Yeah. I guess we're done. Yeah. We were verbose enough. Any, any, <laughs> any more comments? Nah, we're good. We're good. Uh, follow <laughs> us on all the stuff and things, guys. Uh, we are on the internet, Um You can find everything there that you'd like. Uh, we are on Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe and rate and leave reviews. You can listen wherever you're already listening. And we're on Twitter at Pod, and, you know, all the other places you know your podcast and then uh we are on patreon uh it's patreon.com slash you know your podcast where we're continuing the lucy lawless i am new experience we just talked about salem <laughs> so we're like getting close yeah we're like catching up with everything yeah next is uh, ash versus evil dead ash versus evil dead is upcoming and next spotify Oh, yeah, we're on Spotify. I said wherever you can listen, but, yeah, Spotify is cool and new. Uh, You can listen on there. (laughs) (laughs) Hello if you have just recently found us on Spotify. Okay. The power. The passion. The The podcast. podcast.